So we have a little bit of a conundrum. Um, when I was doing the titanium project, I noticed that the uh, after I changed the tool bit and I did the last, I think, seven pieces, they, they rapidly decreased in quality, and I wasn't sure why. Well, you may recall that when I put the tool post on, I used a flat bar to align it, okay? And it was very easy, therefore, to just look over the, the surface here and note that the tool post had rotated. This is not good. What I'm trying to do is figure out a way that I can put in an anti-rotation feature on the tool post. Now, I do know that the tool post has some pin holes in the bottom for ground pins, and I, I think we're going to be able to take a look at those and maybe use those and, and, and make a feature here. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to be examining what we can do to improve the tool post to prevent rotation. This is the Dorian V35 TC tool post. And as you can see, it sits, we start with the cross slide surface, and then there's a block with a T-slot in it right here. That is bolted down to the cross slide with two bolts. It's very firm and they go into fixed holes. The T-nut slides in the T-slot and has a single hole and then the stud comes up here and this is where we tighten. So we're gonna take this all apart and let's see if we can't figure out how to improve it so that we can eliminate rotation. One, one thing that's, that's pretty important to note is that when you put a tool post, on, a, a tool holder on here, um, the forces, there's gonna be two forces. One is straight back and, and one is, is this way. The straight back force is going to always cause rotation forces in the tool post. The, the force this way is going to cause rotation in the opposite direction. So when you're cutting normal lathe cuts, there is going to be an angle, a pressure angle, which is going to, which is going to put a force vector right through the center of the tool post, and it's not going to make any rotation demands <laughs> on, the, on the tool post. And therefore, when we're doing normal lathe work, we really infrequently uh, will encounter those if everything's pretty rugged. And that's what happened to me. I, I hadn't seen this problem before. But now because we're taking a cutoff tool and we're putting a force in one direction, okay, that force is, it is trying to torque this tool post around on the pivot. So it's sort of a worst case condition and now we're trying to figure out how we could uh, improve it. Others have done it. I'm not the first one. Uh, see Robin Renzetti. Uh, see uh, you know many others. But I'm going to figure out my solution here, and we'll come up with something that fixes the problem. So when we were cutting the titanium discs, which are all packaged up and ready for my customer, um, at, the, at the end of the project, when I had already re replaced the insert, I started getting some less than ideal cuts. And I started seeing some marks on the face of the part. And what I found was that the tool post 
had rotated. So this is the tool post off the lathe. Okay. And that's how it sits. That's how it sits in the lathe. And what we found was that the, the pressure from cutting is coming from this single, singular direction. It's pushing directly in this way. And what happens is it wants to rotate the tool post. Uh, here's an instant replay of that. Ready? This finger is, is making believe it's the, it's the uh, tool post stud. And this finger is making believe it's the, tool, it's the cutting pressure. You ready? See the rotation? It, it really wants to rotate. And I think um, when I went to look to see if anything had changed, I in fact noticed that the tool post had rotated. Not a lot, but enough to change the game. So we're going to take a look at figuring out how to prevent that rotation. Now, the stud and T-nut that goes into the tool block on the lathe, in fact, has a couple of pinholes in the bottom, and the tool post itself has multiple pinholes. So when this is connected on the lathe, you can have a pin going through and preventing rotation by transferring that rotation to the T-nut. The fit of the T-nut into the tool block on the lathe is okay. It's not great. In fact, I could see that it was machined. And we're going to, let's measure that. Let's see, what, let's see what size pin that takes. Okay, this is a 375. Oh, yeah. It's way bigger than that. Nope. Getting there. Aha. So that's a 393 minus. That's a, ooh, that's a nice fit. That's 394 minus. All right, that, that's a really nice sliding fit. And that's uh, 0 0.395 inches with a minus tolerance. So we're going to call that 395. And now if we check the tool post, same thing, 395. So let's write that down. So that's the size of our pin. So let's check if, if we drop this guy in. Yeah, it's a nice fit. Little, little chip in there. Let's go that way. So interestingly, okay, there we go. So that's a good fit. This is the 395 here. This is the 394 here. And I like that fit. So let's figure out what's going on here. Now that we've made a measurement, Let's figure out what the design intent was. So that would be a 394. And these are measuring 395 minus. So I think this is a, a, a little, this is a slide fit for a 10 millimeter pin. Um, that tells us what we need to know. Next thing is, how do we get a good fit? between the T-nut and the tool block. We could remake it, that's one option, or we can do something like put a, uh, a shim on here. So we're gonna take our uh, feeler gauge and we're gonna come up with what the fit is uh, in the tooling block. Okay, so we're, 
we're at the lathe and we're going to take these feeler gauges and figure out what the fit is of this T-block. So unsurprisingly, I'm feeling a little action in there. Um, this is not quite PFG stone territory. I'm going to start with a flat file. So this is uh, file territory. So we're going to have to come in here with the flat file. But before we do that, let's just take a quick a coarse measurement and see what we got for, uh, for fit. I'm going to guess we're down at about mm, five thousandths. Yeah, so it's somewhere around nine thousandths of gap. Um, so we have some choices. We can we can open that gap and put something in there. We can um, shim that to take that little bit of rotation out. We could put some set screws in the side of the block that are adjustable so that we could literally adjust out um, that little gap. So we need to think. We've got some steel sh shim stock here. Um, Here's some 8.2. That sounds even more interesting. Let's do a little fit check with the 8.2. Oh, that's nice. That's not bad. So, okay, maybe 8.2 is a nice... Uh, you know, if, if we make it too thick it's going to end up being a pain in the neck all the time, right? So that 8.2 felt good. It's probably 8 thousandths nominally. Um, and we measured about 9 thousandths. So let's say we're going to use that, okay? That's going to be our choice for, for that shim. Um, there's no reason we can't make a shim that just goes in there and gets uh, some cyanoacrylate to hold it in. Let's see what we got. So this is um, about 340 deep here. So if we made a shim that was 0 0.300 inches, we'd be fine. So 0.3 by, by 3.5. So we're over here on the Lapzetti plate, and I have two edges that are available to me. So I'm just going to take the, the block and just rub it on the, on the corner here, and we'll see what we got cooking. Now you'll note that I'm putting pressure here to keep this nice and flat. This this hand is not doing anything really. It's just I'm just feeling, make sure nothing wacky is going on. Let's see what we got. Oh yeah, interesting. <laughs> so right there on the right. You can see a little gazinga when they machined this. This was clearly done on a milling machine like that. Same exact pattern. 
See that? And if we turn that around, see that? <laughs> Interesting. Okay, this is our shim. This is a, a hardened pin. It's actually, the ends have been ground on. We don't care about that. And this is a hard piece of A2 tool steel. And we're just going to uh, rub the pin on the shim. And you can already see the burr getting flattened out. That's all we're trying to do here. I guess we could stone it off, but that would be a, more than we need to do. I was hoping I wouldn't have to do any machining on this block. Yes. We may be able to get away from that, but there is a little lip on the bottom. Like when they machined this, they did not go all the way down. <sighs> That looks good. Okay. So now we're going to check for that rotational motion. Nothing. Okay. So I'm happy with that, but that fit is excellent with that shim. So I think, I think we have a solution for the fit between this block and the T nut. Let's go into metric mode here. Okay, this is 19 millimeters. So we want our pins to be at least 19 millimeters. This depth here. Is nine millimeters. Now I'm going to go to the lathe and measure the distance between the top of this surface and the top of this surface. And that will give us our um, maximum pin length. Okay, 4.8 millimeters. Let's call it five. Okay. So we've got 14 and 20 is 34 is 33 millimeters. So we don't have to go we have to decide if we want it sticking out a little bit here or uh, we want that subsurface. I think I want it subsurface. Well, so we're looking for um, 10 millimeter by 35 millimeter pins. Guess what? McMaster car. We basically specified 10 millimeters steel hardened and we have two choices uh we have the 50 52 100 alloy steel that comes in packets of 10 for a 32 millimeter and a 34 millimeter here is three dollars each in 4140 we're gonna get a package of 51 200. okay so minor change of plans we've decided to uh, go ahead and glue this shim in uh, and I've marked the side of the T-nut 
where I'm going to put it. So the first thing we'll do is we'll we'll stone the the tea nut. So I'm going to be putting pressure down. I'm not putting pressure this way, but I'm allowing it to ride on that side because it doesn't matter. The other thing that I did here is I put, I put this nut on just to keep this thing a little more level. So if we take a look at this, we can see a little bright spot and we can see that this, this is not exactly the, uh, the epitome of, of precision and that's okay. Then we've got our shim <clears throat> and we're just going to literally stone the shim to make sure there's no, no burrs sticking up. We've already used the uh, hardened plate to iron the shim out. And now we're just stoning it again, making sure that there's no burrs sticking up. Okay. Next, we're going to come in with the solvent and we'll clean it. T-slot is clean, shim is clean, okay. So this is one of my favorite uh, cyanoacrylates, okay, this is Bob Smith Industries. There's a link for this in my Amazon affiliate links over at pfg.gg slash links, and I really like their product. This is a thickened cyanoacrylate. I'm just going to put a little bit down here. That's more than plenty. We will definitely get some squish, which is fine. All right, so we're going to put this in, and then we're going to we're going to hit it with the block. And then we may squirt in some accelerator here. I'm aligning this so that the top edge there we go is at the top of the T-slot. Not because I want it at the top of the T-slot, but because I don't want it at the bottom where there might be a lip in the uh, in the tool holder. So I'm pushing down with 12 uh, times 10 to the second grunts. I'm just gonna hit underneath here with the zip kicker. That ought to do it. This is real time. Yeah, and we'll just, uh, you know, give it a, give it a little bit here. Okay, let's see what we got. Of course, we got a little stickage here. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, it moved a little bit, but it's not going to hurt anything. We've got a razor blade. I'm just going to run the razor blade down here. That's it. There's the two products I used. By the way, this is a this is an aerosol. I don't buy this anymore. I buy the uh, the pump from uh, Bob Smith Industries. So now I'm going to take my uh, PFG stones and I'm just going to 
do the same thing I was doing before. And just hit this one more time. go so it's not perfect there's some shiny spots but I think uh, I think it'll work let's just go do a fit a fitment test and see how this goes into our uh, tool post and we're going to be keeping our uh, shim side on the left and let's go try that this is our our shim side here I'm going to go over to our tool post to see how it fits. That is really nice. I can't I can't feel any rotation in here. Okay? But it slides really nicely. So that is a good fit. If I if I try really hard, I can feel a teeny bit of rotation, but I think it's totally acceptable and way better than it was. So I think we have a winner. Nice. <clears throat> so the next step is we have our pins coming in and literally it's just going to be uh, pinning the tool post and uh, putting it all back together now yeah that's really nice so what what is that going to do for us the tool post is going to be pinned here and the tool post now won't have any uh, rotation but it will still be able to get pushed and slid and the clamping uh, of the tool post is going to be preventing that. We're okay with that because that's never been a problem. And in fact, any pressure, any tool pressure is going to have to push this whole thing. And we, we just haven't seen any evidence of that. It was, it was the rotation that was really uh, the problem. So this is, this is pretty good, okay? This is not a perfect solution. The next step, if we don't think this is, this is going to improve the tool post, the next step is we're going to drill two tooling holes here on this block, and that is an even better solution. But it's a little bit less expedient. I mean, we'll be done, we'll be done five minutes after UPS shows up tomorrow, whereas uh, if I have to pull the block out, then we're going to have to pull it out, drill it, uh, ream it, and that's just going to take longer. So I think we're close to a solution here, and the proof of the pudding is going to be in the uh, in the tasting when the pins show up. Keep your fingers crossed. All right, it's the next day. And guess what we got? We got some 10 millimeter pins. So let's see how this stuff fits up, and this might be the wrap. Let's see. All right, so we've stoned the bottom of the tool post. We've stoned the top of the tool block. So these are the long pins. M10 by 32 millimeter. Okay, so these holes are a, a slip fit for these pins, which means they're going to fall right through. So we're going to do a little trick here in order to make that a captive pin.
Yep. There we go. Now they're not going to fall through. We turn this guy around. There's our shim. And there's, that's how it's going to look. Checking our rotational play again. Feels really good. Now, all I did was just put a little hand torque on here. Okay. And I can't move that thing. Now, there's a tiny bit of play because we have several surfaces, right? We have the surface from the tool block to the shim attached to the T-nut. Then we have the surface from the T-nut to the pin. Then we have the surface from the pin to the, to the tool post. So this is not the most ideal, stiffest uh, situation possible. I keep this in the uh, Department of Grinding Department. Just going to bring that up to there and tighten that guy. Boom. Okay. That's looking great. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to indicate the simple way. I'm going to put a tool block on it and indicate the face of the tool block. And to do that, I'm going to have to power up the lathe and zero it. So give me a second. So we've not had a problem with fore and aft motion. We've had a problem with rotational motion. That is now locked up by the pins. We've shimmed the the um, T-nut the to take out some excess movement there, and that's all we've done. This is probably good enough uh, for everything I'm going to do. And the next step after this is real simple. It's ditch this tool block and make a one-piece block that has a threaded hole for this um, stud, and it has the two locating holes, and that's it, nothing else. And that would remove all this extra complication. So I recognize that this is not an ideal situation, but this is a pretty good situation. So we're going to uh, we're going to go with it. All right, I'll be back after this thing's finished getting into uh, getting uh, homed, and then we'll we'll indicate this thing up. Okay, so we've got um, the indicator zeroed, and let's just make make the axis move here. So across that whole block, uh, we've got plus two, just over plus two thousandths from one end of the block to the other end of the block. I'm not sure we can accommodate that. Let's see. So I'm wondering if that movement is coming from the T-slot. Yeah, I could. No, some of it's coming from the pins and some of it's coming from the T-slot. Very little is coming from the T-slot, but definitely some of it's coming from the pins. So we have a choice. We can accept it for now. I mean, if we lock that up, it's going to basically be the same situation. Aha, I see the problem. I see the problem. One of our pins has dropped out. Our uh, 
our little upset mark was not enough. Let me let me go handheld and I'll show it to you. See it? Well, there is your problem. Okay, let me reset that pin and let's see what happens. Okay, we did it. There's a little more a little more gazinga for you. So let's put our pins back in. So we're going to put them in with the the strong taper strong taper down. And that's what it looks like on the bottom now. All right, let's see if that helped it. Feels better, but it's not perfect. We're gonna have to live with not perfect. So that's minus three. No, minus four. Plus two. So that's six thousandths across those inches. Probably fine. And it is turned so it's up against um, one of the pins. So once again, let's do the last thing we did before, which is just see where the play is coming from. So I'm sticking my finger down here as I rotate this and I'm feeling the block, the T-nut, I'm sorry. And I do feel a little movement. So that's a little unsatisfying. And the rest of it is coming from the pins. And they don't have uh, a satisfying engagement. So we have to decide what we're going to do here. Yeah, most of that play is coming from the pins. Let's put a mic on the pins. So, <clears throat> not bad. Seventy millionths over. Well, that tells me that uh, the holes are not great. All right, let's investigate the holes. Yeah, I could feel a little wiggle there. You can feel a little wiggle there. Not too much. So I decided to pull the tool block to investigate what's going on. And we're gonna end up cleaning everything and seeing what we got. So this block is not pinned. It is just screwed down. This block has been on here a long time. After screwing around for a while, I finally decided to pull the block off the lathe, do a little ins cleaning and inspecting. Um, the fit that I got from the T-nut to the block is quite good. Not perfect, but quite good. But I'm not happy with the pins fit into the T-nut. Okay, we've got the Bob Smith. 
extra thick cyanoacrylate. Some of my favorite stuff. And we're gonna give it a shot. All right, these guys are in. They're not going anywhere. So I'm just gonna clean up a little bit. So one of the features of this T-nut is that I can take a punch and punch these out if necessary. But right now they are super glued in place. Let's go see how this works. Okay, so on the lathe, <clears throat> tool post sits like so. This guy will come over like so. I'll grab my nut. Holy cow. Well, I could feel it already. Yeah, I think most of the play was in those pins in the T-nut, which is not a huge surprise. So I think I'm gonna go do a good job mounting this thing back on the lathe, and then we'll, uh, we'll remeasure. But I think, I think we have a good result here. Of course, we can't, we can't just go over to the lathe. Okay, we've stoned the top of the cross slide. We've stoned the bottom of the tool block. We've indicated the side. And it's as close to zero, zero as we're gonna get it. We're seeing a little tool drag, but we're not seeing any variation over the range. So then we torqued these uh, these guys down, the tool block is in and it's square. We mounted the tool post on the tool block and we snug it up by hand. We had stoned, we had previously stoned the bottom of the tool post and of course we finished um, gluing in the pins. And now we're just gonna tighten this by hand, crack it, just a little bit. And now we're just gonna see what we get for rotation. So I've got the indicator on the close end of a tool block. This happens to be our cutoff tool. That's one thousandth of an inch. So we're gonna rotate it toward us, right? Counterclockwise. And then we're going to tighten this guy, and we'll take a reading. Two and a half thousandths. It's not terrible. That means over the course of a cutoff for a two inch tool, it's going to be on the order of a one thousandth of an inch change. 
I don't know that we're going to get any better, better than that. But more importantly, it's not going to move. So I think we're calling it done. So what's it all mean? Um, we shimmed the T-nut. We added the pins. We glued the pins into the T-nut. And that's where we stand. Uh, it's the system's pretty square. We can improve it a little bit. Um, we made the tool block square to the table uh, to the travel. We made an improvement. Is it the final improvement? No. I think that we have to get rid of the T nut. In fact, we have to get rid of this tool block and make a dedicated block that just goes from the cross slide directly to this tool post with nothing in the middle. But that's not happening today because I've got stuff to do. So thanks for hanging out. We may play around a little bit more, but I think we're pretty much done with this project. Take care.